Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Hewlett Packard, a transfer oscillator model 540B. This is actually a very, very interesting product. So what this is doing, there is a main oscillator and it goes from 100 to 220 mega cycles all right so this frequency is mixed with incoming signals and then you can adjust for a beat zero and then see uh the mixed or the beat zero on this uh, scope and then you can calculate what was the input frequency I think you get the idea, right? So, the thing is, this oscillator is specially made to generate harmonics, a lot of harmonics, actually all the way to 12 gigahertz. Look at that. So you take the output from the oscillator and then you can put it into this, the low frequency mixer below 4 kilo mega cycles that means below four gigahertz in normal language signal input here right and then you should uh, be able to see what's going on but what if we move the oscillator input here and then this is from 2 to 12 gigahertz that's interesting i look forward to try that it's also possible to use an external mixer and then you use uh, here the harmonic output and the oscillator input here from uh, from your external mixer and this way you can use this uh, unit all the way up to 18 gigahertz um, I don't actually know how you operate this in in real life because I think if you come with a 12.4 gigahertz signal I mean, how do you know if it is the first or the second or the next? And you know what I mean? The, the harmonics where it beats. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's just that smart, really. You really need to know where you are, plus minus a few a hundred megahertz. Then you can, of course, use it, right? But if you really don't know where you are between 10 and 12 gigahertz, I mean, you are just totally lost because you will have harmonics again and again and again all the way, right? There is a, there's actually a little problem here. So before I power this up, I actually want to open it and inspect it. And also this, see, I can't move this at all. I believe these should be coupled, but it's totally blocked. It's actually moving a little bit, but it's not moving. So yeah. I need to, need to open it. For you guys who don't know this particular case, it's actually a very normal HP case. First, you just take off the rear panel with the four screws I've done here. And then you'll actually be able to see what is going on here inside. See, there is a 19 inch rack module inside and it is locked up here look at that here you go so it's locked on the top in each side here's another lock very hard to focus there you go and to unrelease this so you'll be able to pull this unit out the locking screws there actually on the here you go let me see if I can show this. Ah, oh, that is the impossible mission. Yeah, 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 you can almost see it, almost, almost. But yeah, we got sc screws in there. Why is it impossible to make this damn camera show this? Because I can see it just as clear as the sun. Here you go, and then I click here. Hello, focus. Yeah, yeah, finally. Right, that is the magic screw, that one. 
Okay, so we just release this screw from the bottom here, and then we should be able to pull it that way so that the top up here goes down, right? And then it comes out. And seen from the outside, that's of course the screws, two of them. It's just super, super easy to handle this kind of case. So now we are inside. And now it was very easy for me to clean up all the old mechanics here. All the old grease was definitely turned into chewing gum. Look at that. This piece of plastic here is actually a little bit worn down, so it could be a good idea to change this because there is a little bit funny feeling and it comes all from this. But now I can move everything after a little bit of cleaning. See, it's nice and shiny. They actually got those tiny little holes here for cleanup and lubrication on all parts that can move, as you can see here. So that is really good. Super smart. I really like this tiny little oscilloscope tube here. And of course it is completely tube based. It's really not super complicated when you look at all the internal stuff here. We've got some rectifiers and power re regulators reference voltage reference tubes and all that kind of stuff in here we got the two uh, oscillator and uh, power drive tubes inside the oscillator right and then we got the coax cables that goes to some of the selection of this and that and how much of whatever you want video response gain how frequency gain and low frequency so this is, of course, to make the picture on the scope look uh, better. The unit is in a very good state. If you think about it, it's about 1960 or something like that. Oh, I just saw here a little thing I need to clean up here around the capacitors. I don't like this white goopity goop here. But other than that, I did a little inspection on the different parts and I don't see anything alarming. There isn't any reason for me not to power this up. So that is definitely what I'm gonna do now. I just wanted to show you a little bit more here on the internals. Here is the oscillator input and the measured input and in here we got some diodes and uh, they are doing this mixing overtone harmonic mixing and here is the here is also one so here's the input and there's the output so this is the the harmonic generator and again here you will have some diodes for harmonic generation. So that is what there is to say about this. All those things, they're actually passive. And you can play with these things uh, using other signal generators and spectrum analyzers and whatever you got. And that is definitely what I'm going to try and play around with as well. And uh, I think it is a good warning about high voltage. I am totally expected that because focus and intensity definitely connected to uh, the CRT uh, cathode side so that will probably be a minus thousand volts or maybe a little bit less this is a tiny tiny tube so it's probably not running on a very high voltage and down here below everything is the mains transformer and again, very good planning, far away from the CRT. So this is definitely how you want to do that. 
I also found found another funny thing. Horizontal, external horizontal input. Isn't that funny? Maybe I can use this as a scope. So as promised, the first power on is of course on video. Let's do it. And so far so good. 130 watts. 100. I mean, I think it, yes, look at that. That is a good sign. Let me turn off the light here. 108, so intensity. Yes, look at that. Focus. 100. It is responding. Quite all right. Look at that. Is this my voice it is responding to? <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, here we go. So this is the horizontal gain. And this is the... I don't know exactly. There is definitely a lot of video response gain here. Look at that. So I think it is that one. Yes! It says video response gain, so that is perfectly fine. See if I crank it up, obviously I'm gonna see a little bit of noise. Ha ha! Higher frequency it is that one. Lower frequency. And then there's a switch here. So let me let me try and input some signal and let, let me try and play with this and see if there's any output and whatnot. So look what I've done here. This is 100 megahertz input and I adjusted the frequency generator for 100 megahertz. And uh, here's my video response gain. So we can say how much we want. Here's my horizontal gain. Oh, we got a little bit off. And here's the frequency. It looks like it's running 60 cycle phase. Maybe this is main frequency, right? And this is actually my FM modulation. I put on some FM modulation on my test signal that I got in here, right? So what if I change the frequency, my FM, see, here's my deviation or if I change my frequency see what I'm saying so I can play with the the frequency here let's go down yeah you see oh look at that the fun thing is look at look at this and if I talk into it hey hey hello hey yeah yeah wah 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 isn't that funny? <laughs> yes, yes, even even from, from this distance, you can really see. It is actually, let me get it up to 200 again. No, it's not interfering anymore. Maybe I should, yes, here we go. I can adjust the frequency. It's sliding a little bit. See, it's very, very sensitive, but of course, but anyway, I believe it actually works. So let's try and turn off uh, modulation is now off. And then I can, of course, tune the frequency. Boom. See, then I hit exactly zero. And you can, of course, adjust how aggressive you want this to be by cranking down video response gain. So if it's all the way down, then it's not so aggressive anymore. Now it's completely gone, right? And then you just say, oh, this is how, how I want it. Look at that. So now it's quite easy to find the peak. And then you got that peak, see, whoops. And then it goes to zero. So that it is actually really, really easy to find. And then look at that, super zero beat. So 
definitely a very useful product and this is at uh, uh, 100 megahertz oscillator and let me try and input 200 megahertz megahertz like that and then let's see what happens see again it's the same that happens here's the zero and then i turn up video response gain and then it goes yeah so i should be finding the zero beep right why isn't it I don't know. Yes, okay, there. Yes, yes, yes. Look, look, look. Here, here it is. Bingo. And now we got the zero beat. So now we put a uh, frequency counter on the oscillator output uh, of this unit. Frequency meter, it's called here, right? And then you can read the exact frequency. Um, of course, it's going to read 100, but you know you are in the 200. Let's look so, yes. at how accurate, how accurate is this readout. It's actually quite accurate, isn't it? And what if I crank this up to 220? Let me just say it's like that, right? 220.06 now of course if if i come with something and then beat it i can actually just take my generator like this and say 200 oops 220 megahertz right and then let's look at the beat oh let's turn off the light See? Snap. So it's actually here is two hundred and twenty. And look at that. How well that works. It is very, very effective. This beat to zero method they they've done here. I am totally amazed. I think I'll try and see if I can get some uh high gigahertz inputs. Let's try this uh the high input here oh, as well. You are going to like this. Here's what I've done. Taking a generator here, a tracking generator, zero span, three gigahertz, zero dBm. Okay, so this is three gigahertz. How cool is that? So, now we try and zero beat. Of course, I know that 200 megahertz is a multiplum of three right so 15 times 200 megahertz is three gigahertz so all i have to do is get it see again so of course it is now a lot more critic critical here to get it into see super zero beat here but of course if i don't want it that super critical i can just play with the Radio response gain and say I don't want it that. The more critical I can have it, of course, the higher resolution, higher accuracy in my frequency measurements. Because it's going to lock more tight. And then on the frequency counter output, I'm of course super sorry I don't have a frequency counter that is, sucks. But of course you can still see the idea here is very close to 200 and HP actually sells frequency counters that can do multiplums of whatever it's measuring. So if you input multiply whatever you're measuring by 15 then you're going to read out this input here. I mean, this this really works. And they could have done this in 1960 or something like that, right? And this is all it takes. Of course, it is still needs to warm up. I think it will take a few hours for this unit to warm up to be stable. But I still 
All you have to do is just dial in this zero beat. Yeah. Now you can see, hello, hello, bup, 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 bup. <laughs> it's really that sensitive. How crazy is that? Ay, 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 ay. That is so much fun. Previously in the video, I explained about this harmonic generator. It's a little standalone module in here. It's not connected to anything at all. So the unit is powered off and let's just play a little bit with the harmonic generator. So what I'm inputting here is 100 megahertz. The output goes to a spectrum analyzer. So here we can see all the way from 0 to 3.2 gigahertz. And here is my 100 megahertz. Let me put it peak. So that this is the first one, and then it's 200, 300, 400, and so on, right? So that is my input, uh, or this is my result of the harmonic generator with 100 megahertz input. So it's not generating harmonics all the way up to insane gigahertz. That was just actually what I wanted to show you guys, but let me show you the distance between the harmonics here is, of course, 100 and so on, right? So let's have a look at what happens if I give it 200 input. See, now you see the distance between the harmonics. That's, of course, 200. And there's actually a little funny thing here with the third one that is more or less missing. Here's my peak again, 200. So let's try and see what happens with 300 and 400 and 500. So that is, of course, 500, 1 gigahertz, 1500. And that's more or less how this uh, harmonic generator works. I was trying to, uh, to test the XY mode because I, I can actually input, look here in mixer output, so I can actually input vertical into mixer output and there is an input on the back that's horizontal external horizontal so here is my oh said two cpu tear down a logo i mean this is not working at all so i think it has, has something to do with the ac coupling and the bandwidth of the amplifiers uh, for this uh, scope it's absolutely useless for that but I think it's quite funny anyway, just to see how weird it looks. I, I can't even read what it says. Just don't work. See, it's actually running and we got output. And then I took off this little shielding cap here on top of the oscillator tubes. And here we go. One is white in the top. So it's absolutely not working but how is it possible to have output here i think it has something to do with the way that this is designed so that is actually really really smart so to prove it's not working see one is a hundred and ten celsius and the other one is nothing so it's actually just copying a little bit of temperature for from the other one so if we look at the schematic of this oscillator, we will see that it is the way that it's coupled uh, the gate plate and gate plate on uh, over a cross uh, to the output uh, inductors. And this is actually a transformer, right? And that is uh, why it's able to oscillate with only one tube. So I think I will try and take out this tube and put in a new one and see if it's better. And I think this also explains why it is better at higher frequencies. Because see what happens here. If I go down to, see, that is 100 megahertz and then it stops. So at the very lowest, we don't have output. So yeah, I'll see if we can, I can find a new tube. So look what I did. I took out this uh, 4C6 that appeared to be defective. And look at the output. This is exactly the same that happens with only one tube in place. 
So yes, it does indeed prove my point. Like I showed earlier in the video, I was uh, playing a little bit with XY mode because it's always super fun when there is a CRT and uh, play a little bit with XY mode. So <laughs> of course, when there is an external input for sweep, so that is horizontal. But look, there's a capacitor here and this distorts the image completely. So because there's zero volts on each side of the capacitor, I could of course short the capacitor and then this will improve my bandwidth quite a lot. But then horizontal goes to this tube up here. I don't know if you can see this. It's just damn. Let's get some light. Here we go. And horizontal is actually driven, balanced. And look at that. Those two capacitors, the small ones up there, they're way too small to handle the bandwidth. Uh, of the graphics that I wanted to show. So I just added a little bit more to improve my bandwidth. And vertical. Vertical, I fed the signal in on the front using the mixer output, but you could of course also put it in directly onto the last tube. So I disconnected the signal from the previous tube. And of course I removed the tube first because, but. Then there was this capacitor that was distorting my image. So now I remove that. So here is my vertical. And vertical is only fed to the tube in single-ended mode. The other side of the deflection plates is just a DC voltage. Uh, those two pot meters, that's actually uh, horizontal and vertical uh, center. So I, of course, improved this capacitor that goes to the deflection. So let's have a look how that looks. So with the deflection super nice and linear, of course I get a nice and and perfect picture. That is so great. Here's a little bit more brightness and focus. That is really, that was a lot of fun. Now there was actually a few more things I wanted to show you. And that is, uh, let's turn this off. The, um, oscillator part here is of course running off a regulated high voltage for for the tubes of course but the filament they also regulate the filaments so how are they regulating filament yeah it's not so easy to um, tube regulate low voltages but they're really really smart so what they did is they created a little switch mode converter running off a regulated high voltage. So that is this tube and this transformer down here. They're creating a switch mode converter of a regulated high voltage. So that means the regulated low voltage uh, that, that comes out of this converter that drives the filaments of the two oscillator tubes they are now completely regulated and stable no matter what the mains voltage will be. And this is of course good for stability. So you can count on the frequency settings and frequency measurements. Absolutely nice.